The Fallen, Megatronus, the big bad chonk bad guy from Revenge of the Fallen. This guy could use the force, teleport, travel between dimensions, fly, beat almost every prime, and died to Optimus Prime who just woke up wearing his buddy's dead body as a jetpack. Yay, story! A couple of things. First off, I'm using a new mic, so let me know how it sounds. It's the Elgato Wave 3, and I have started doing more and more shorts because they're a lot of fun to do. So there's a whole playlist linked in the description if you want to check those out. The um, My favorite ones to make, and I've made a whole bunch more, have been the um, things that cringe Transformers fans. So there will be more of those coming out. Don't worry. I know a lot of people are liking those. This is The Fallen from 2009, and I'm patiently waiting for the inevitable studio series release of this guy. This particular version is the one from the box set released back in 2009. I believe this was an exclusive to somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, if you want to check out the unboxing for this, I'll leave that in the description as well. I got a whole bunch of really old sealed figures from a really good store for relatively good prices. So you can check that out in the description. This guy is far from perfect, but it's still a super cool figure to own. Not sure if there's any difference between this and the retail release. I'm, I don't know if there is a difference. It might just be the color of the figure overall. I think the retail version is more black and this one's more green, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> wow, voice crack. But I do also want to get the Hunt for the Decepticons version because it's a slight remold with nicer head assembly, slightly better arms, and some new parts. So it looks really cool. But it's super expensive, like hell no. And the store I bought this from just doesn't sell it, which is pain. This does the spring-loaded feet thing, but it's so much better than Megatron's stupid dumbass feet. Check out that short link below. I still wish this had normal hinged feet because being spring-loaded is a little bit annoying and kind of limits the posability. But overall, it is more manageable than the stupid Megatron from the first movie. The detail on this guy feels very 2009, but it does the job and looks really, really cool. The orange is super nice and complements this weird submarine green or some color. I really don't know what this is, but it does work. I don't remember him being this exact color in the film. However, I haven't seen it in years, so he could be a completely different color or he could be this color. I don't know. I'm not super sure about the scale of this either because Next to Studio Series figures, it doesn't really fit. I remember on the old Revenge of the Fallen website, it said that he was 100 feet tall and Megatron was like 36 feet tall or something. And I don't remember that much of a height difference in the film, so scale him as you see fit. Looks great next to Megatron, but my Megatron's in a box because it's in a box. So here it is next to Devastator. It does look cool next to Devastator too. He has an annoying cockpit piece sticking out of the back, but it's easy enough to remove. I will be making a short on how to remove it. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that uh, because it's super easy. Now, the place where this guy falters the most is the posability. He has posability but it's not super usable. It's kind of unfortunate because I wanted to get this guy in his force wielding pose, but nah, no dice. This is the best I can really do. And I don't like this. I do really like the knee pads. They remind me a lot of Gunpla Master Grade knees where they like move the knee pad itself separately from the knee. I love that kind of engineering and figures and models like this. Transformation is kind of just half-assed because the jet mode is kind of half-assed because if you didn't know, he doesn't transform in the film at all. So this is all concept art and well, it's okay. The design is neat and all, but I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Fortunately, this guy stands alone in his bot mode very well. So you don't really need the jet mode to rely on for this thing. Um, it is large though. The wingspan, if you can call these feet wings, is a decent size to make it stack up with other figures from the time and now actually their wingspans. Uh, and it fits in with the movie aesthetic very well. Now, something that needs to be talked about is the quality of this. It's miles better than anything from today. And I mean almost anything from today. Studio series, Generations, Cyberverse, it just knocks it out of the park quality wise. Gonna do a weight test here uh, next to Earthrise Prime and there is just so much more plastic. It's thicker and denser, it's sturdier. The materials are nicer. Even the clear plastic on this, I'm not scared of because even though the clear plastic in the arms has hinges, it's not gonna break. It's super dense clear plastic that it's sturdy enough to hold up to the test of time. And it's just a lot nicer to mess with because you don't have the, oh, I may break this hanging in the back of your mind. 
But then again, modern engineering is also super nice to have. So you, you give and take, you have old engineering with really good quality plastic or not so great plastic quality, but really good engineering. So it, it all depends on which one you want. Does that mean older toys are better than the new ones? Yes and no. I mean, that kind of answers the question in the title. Yes or yes and no, it depends. If you were to buy Studio Series 72, I think it's 72, Starscream, that thing is awesome. If you buy Earthrise Prime like this, that is awesome. But if you get Earthrise Ratchet, for example, or uh, Siege, um, what's his name, Prowl, probably not great ideas to get those because they're not gonna hold up to the test of time. My Ratchet's already breaking. But then you have figures like the Fallen who's really, really good, but his articulation kind of sucks but he can hold up to the test of time. This thing will survive a very, a very long time. So it all depends. In the end, however, I really, really like this and I would recommend it to anyone if the price is reasonable because I have seen the stock version of this go up for a lot more online than I paid for this set alone. So you do want to keep that in mind. I believe on the website where I bought this from, it's like 70 Canadian dollars for the uh, standalone figure sealed, which is a really good price for it sealed. So. It all depends on where you're shopping and where you look to find it. But yeah, that's been my look at The Fallen. Thank you very much for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, linked below, and check out the Discord as well, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.